why the projector is going to be uh, switched on and the uh, visual will appear. Uh, I would like to thank Richard for uh, inviting me to talk about uh, the artist Papi Bremer and the framework of this symposium. And, uh, it's uh, really great. I mean, I'm just at the moment installing this exhibition um, at Baden Row, of the Cafe Bremer, and it's an extremely busy time, but I'm really looking forward also to uh, the discussions. I'm very happy that Mark Fischer also has been contributing now in this presentation, or with whom uh, we have been in conversation also around the work of Cafe Bremer and the conditions of capitalism. Um, and uh, I'm I'm going to present uh, a kind of uh, reflection on the work of Kabi Bremer, and I have to say that I'm kind of bit struggling because as more I have become familiar with the work by KP, as more I have become a fan of his work. Really. I have been doing an exhibition with his work a few years ago in Seville, which was kind of the pre version of the exhibition, real capital production at the Ravenrona in London. And uh, I have been researching a lot of images that I want to share with you. I usually do not uh, show a lot of images, but I think it's really important. I would like to introduce the work by Capi by um, as, well, as comprehensive as possible. And um, so I would like to start um, to talk uh, about Capi Bremer and the way how he had arrived in uh, New York in 1976 when he was joining the um, form of an exhibition um, the, um, or kind of continuing the collaboration with René Bloch. He had a gallery just around the corner um, that was on the 409 um, West Broadway Way, just really literally around between 1974 and 77. And uh, these images were taken by uh, Gwen Phillips, an African-American photographer who has been documenting quite a lot of activities, exhibitions in the mid of the 70s um, in New York. And I'm, I started to begin uh, with this in order to indicate the importance of the archival image and the documentation of these activities that we are now referring to. And Capri increasingly gains a lot of interest because of his work uh, to analyze um, the kind of different strategies of capitalist realism or also a form of global capitalism that emerged in the 60s. So, um, the focus I have been approaching the work by Capi is also uh, concerned about the social conditions, since in Capi's work, the social function of art plays a crucial role throughout his entire practice. He has been working, um, he, he got to know René Bloch while he was studying at the Werkkunstschule in, um, in, um, in, uh, in Krefeld and uh, they knew each other for a lot of uh, time and uh, he has been educated in printing techniques uh, which means kind of a mass medium um, kind of technique that was allowing him to get in detail, to get to know in detail about printing techniques and um, I just would like to indicate that uh, framework uh, when Kapi Prima and René Bloch arrived here in uh, New York, uh, René Bloch in the back and uh, Kapi Prima here in front. And uh, I would like to kind of point out um, in terms of uh, the particular role that he had in the scene of the 70s in Berlin and also in the collaboration with René that had been mentioned uh, with the Living with Pop exhibition, but also his activities in Berlin since 1964, that Capi was uh, introduced by René as uh, of um, the three artists discussed in this catalog, and this is the catalog of the exhibition made in Berlin in 1976 in the New York in the gallery. Of the three artists discussed in this catalog, which were uh, Kabi Bremer, Ha Hürdike, and Rebecca Horn, Kabi Bremer is the most politically active. Much, though not all, of his work revolves around political concepts and the sometimes ridiculous, sometimes frightening divisions imposed by political barriers, ideology, and the corporate interests of multinational combines. And you have to keep in mind that the scene in the Berlin had consisted of a very politically leftist, ideological active uh, um, group of artists uh, that had been po um, exposing projects at the NGBK gallery, uh, claiming that um, artistic practice has to take the fight and the struggle on the street, and uh, kind of insisting in a way to 
make clear that um, the uh, kind of the, the, the realm of art has to go to the street in support of the worker and struggle and, and the, on the political struggle. And Berlin at the time had a very uh, specific, uh, of course, goal and uh, framework because of the division of uh, the city. And it was a post-fascist Germany, and it had a double light of socialism and capitalism that was exposed and signified, indicated, very precisely by the Berlin Wall, dividing the city into east and west. That means that artists like Capé had been continuously in the vernacular, quotidian, everyday, uh, everyday life exposed to the German-German division that uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, the Indian president, defined in 1961 as an international frontier. So the division of Berlin, the division of Germany, is not only kind of a national concern or a kind of a national issue, it has a global consequence. It's an international frontier that uh, then later on has been discussed and um, uh, theorized as a global world war of two competing economic systems of the real existing socialism and uh, the real existing capitalism. And particularly in Berlin you have had these inscriptions into the city by the House of the World Parties, for example, that brought forward the re-education program of the United States in Germany, particularly in Berlin, or of the American Gedenke Boutique, of various institutions, cultural institutions, education institutions that have shaped the everyday life and also kind of um, artistic production at the time. And I'm, I'm saying this in order to also to make a differentiation between uh, the situation as it, it was in Berlin uh, in comparison to Dusseldorf or to Cologne at the time. I mean, Living with Pop took place 63 in Dusseldorf, important exhibition, but you can see in uh, the frame uh, that the concerns in relation to the realism had been slightly different and not, as René Bloch would say, not directly political as it had been exposed and practiced uh, in Berlin. And um, Capé um, uh, was also documenting the activities of Valerie René Bloch. Here is Stan Le Brown. So I have been researching the archives in order, in, fa in fact, in order to understand the conditions of production of his practice, but also the conditions of exhibiting of his project. The huge challenge in the work by Capé Bremer is. Um, that he was refusing any historizing kind of um, process through uh, exhibition making. And this is in the year of 2014 when he drew an exhibition with the work by an artist who refused historizing institutionalization of his um, practice. It is a huge challenge and needs to be addressed. If we have time, we can talk about this a bit later. So, um, Kara Hürdike was another artist working with René Block Gallery. I'm showing this in order to indicate what kind of activities took place in forms of action on the street, uh, in a framework of uh, a Blockade 69 uh, that René Block organized in this gallery. Uh, Sigmar Polka also contributed the piece in the gallery spaces, of course, uh, René Block uh, Gallery. Richard Hamilton had been a crucial kind of um, um, figure, but also friend for Capé. Uh, he was introduced to the Berlin scene through René Bloch, who has shown him quite a few times, and uh, also uh, Capé Bremer and Richard Hamilton did an exhibition together with Peter Roth in 1973. And just kind of try to delineate a little bit the framework of um, of the time. So. Um, uh, also, of course, uh, boys played a role at that time. Uh, René Bloch had opened his gallery in New York with I Like America, America Likes Me, and of course, he also played a crucial part in the scene of artists in the mid uh, and 60s, Düsseldorf, but also Berlin, uh, early 70s. Boys and Prima during the discussion in an exhibition in 73 in Hannover, Art and the Political Struggle. And um, uh, they all, I mean, uh, they all went together actually uh, to the Festival for Neue Kunst at the Technical College in Aachen. And uh, this is the moment was in '64, where Boys, Bremer, Wolf Fostel, uh, René Bloch were all kind of traveling together. And the group that was shocked about the apolitical direction uh, that the festival has chosen, repressing any reflection on the function of art after 1945. And there, Boyce did his famous speech performance, and also then subsequently uh, went to the Düsseldorf Academy. 
uh, to introduce uh, his kind of liberating concepts and his social sculpture uh, as a kind of a principle of teaching and uh, artistic practice as a politicized form to address the trauma the, uh, of the Second World War, but also the repression of the post-fascist Germany with regard to image production uh, and kind of uh, everyday vernacular or what they call trivial uh, channels of distribution of information. However, and this is a really important, and this is also where the relevance of Papi comes into the present and why it becomes so interesting for us, Bremer's artistic thinking refused forms of mythologization and of parallel realities. His concern is a realism in the Brechtian way, in terms of um, that he understood the means of art as an instrument to intervene into reality, into channels of distribution that would form public opinion. And here I would like actually to pose the question that is a quote by Carpe, uh, the artist should be an official in terms of taking social and political responsibility. And I know that it's a quite a, kind of a tricky and a, kind of a dangerous, uh, risky terrain to call the question whether the artist should be an official with regard to the position of independence and uh, a position towards the state, state structures. So it's the reality of real existing capitalism that increased its forces through the industrialization of the warfare and what we, um, after of course the Second World War, a psychological warfare, the images of war towards a global capitalism after 1945. And here, and I would like to quote as often as possible, Carpe, he also commented on his projects and um, declared his position uh, when he says, in my view, that the only progress achieved by art is that represented by the transference of its whole intensity from I, from the subject, from the individual, to we. Through ideological kleptomania, so to speak, we must intervene in bourgeois cultures, whereby the value of the personal possession, which is inherent in artistic creation, is reduced. This is possible by withholding creativity and substituting imitation. This modification consists of the reduction of artistic language to apparent theft and adoption of collective symbols. The transferring of art from the ideology of self to a social plan signifies stepping away from the private act of individual creation in former, in, sorry, in favor of a collective and anonymous stance in order to recognize reality through a frame of preferences and to provide an orientation for oneself and the onlooker. So what he is actually proposing is a deprivatization of the figure of the artist and also uh, feeding and um, kind of bringing over the property of art as a private property towards a social property. And here I think it's a crucial distinction uh, in the work by Kapi Bremer to his fellow of Sigmar Polke and Wolf Stell and also Boys um, that, um, as I'm going to show a, a few works, when he takes this kind of, um, these collective symbols and the intervention into reality extremely serious by that what he has called circumstantial evidences. And this also brings him closer to fellows of the time as Harun Farocki. Um, I know that last week that took place a tribute to Harun here at the artist space um, who lived in Berlin at the same time as you know and Kapi and also Harun knew each other um, also um, are working on similar kind of uh, questions but I mean Harun by the means of film and uh, Kapi I would argue by the means of mass distribution with regard to printmaking and to image production. And um, so I would like to uh, kind of show a few works um, and I would like to start uh, by the work that you might remember from the Istanbul Biennial where I think his work was exposed again on a larger audience and recognized again. Uh, this is a piece of uh, the work uh, Seele und Gefühl eines Arbeiters, Soul and Feelings of a Worker. And it's a very good example for a research-related project practice that uh, exists in several parts as uh, Bremer used to work. The point of departure for the series of works was Rapport's being her study of the emotions of workers 
during the manufacturing processes um, process. The study in industrial organization psychology or labor psychology was published as a book, Seele und Gefühl des Arbeiters, Psychologie zur Menschenführung. The uh, soul and feeling of the worker psychology for, uh, well, to kind of conduct or to lead uh, humans. And it was already published in 1935. Hörse used the categories very happy, happy, cheerful, interested, neutral plus, neutral minus, peevish, disgusted, sad, apprehensive, and worried in order to delineate uh, kind of a survey how the emotions of the worker feed into his capacity uh, of laboring. And you can see that, um, oh, I mean, the way how it's here translated by KP into um, a piece uh, in this uh, kind of diagrammatic work is that he takes up in a kind of this kind of circumstantial evidence by borrowing this kind of psychological study and from the book into a color scale that starts here from the red to the yellow, which is kind of indicating all these kind of emotional stages that we are suggested by, um, by her say to kind of measure and to categorize human labor. And um, this is uh, kind of uh, taking seriously means of art to intervene into kind of processing of, uh, of data, of psychological studies, in order to um, kind of reveal the mechanisms how, and this I think it comes here to that what Mark just has been uh, talking about, how the self is affected and shaped by capitalist realism, uh, and I would argue already as one of the major projects of the European modernity, if we look kind uh, of uh, which role uh, health had played and the control of leisure in the reform movements of the early 20th century, how the self had been already implicated into uh, manufacturing and industrialized uh, kind of circuits. And um, Capé also kind of uh, underwent these um, um, observations by himself by conducting a diary uh, himself, also when he was in New York, which introduces another component of that what for Bert Brecht has been really important in terms of uh, delineating a realism, uh, a self-reflexivity to undergo this process of observation and the self-surveillance or how, I mean, how labor and the psychological condition, the psychic state to be in labor uh, depend on each other. And uh, you can see also here in this work that um, um, yeah, that uh, the artistic means um, are the means that are taken up in order to take a political position and a social position and not to kind of um, turn into a research process to delineate the psychological study as an original or as a kind of a source material, but to kind of translate um, the statistics, the data management into an artistic language that is used to intervene in the constructiveness of um, the kind of the management of data with regard to the control of labor and the role of the worker. So this work, uh, Soul and Feelings of a Worker, has been developed for a project in 1978, um, 30 degree east, 11 artists working in Berlin. And I'm just showing this to you also to indicate a range of the spectrum, the project-related practice um, of KP. Um, this exhibition in 73 was at the White Chapel Gallery, was one of the last uh, collectively organized exhibitions by, um, here in this case, 11 artists from Berlin. And uh, where you can see, like in the upper row uh, on the left, is um, kind of a study that has been translated from the book by Hersey, a worker in Germany, and below it's a worker from, um, from the United States. Um, I would like to mention um, or this kind of um, focus on very specific uh, data, data management, also another kind of indicator of a realistic practice as proposed by Brecht, to be extremely to be precise and concrete and to focus on a very situation related um, um, and well, uh, facts and uh, data. Uh, here is another kind of study, as he called it, and this also is part of his practice and part of uh, his project. 
It's um, called, it's from 1979, uh, the, the top firms in West Europe, the most important corporations in Western Europe. But he has been delineating um, data from magazine, I can't recall now what magazine it is exactly, in order to kind of translate um, the way how um, kind of uh, globalizing forces in terms of economics, how um, kind of international combines in the West are controlling or shaping geography and shaping kind of um, uh, um, the uh, distribution of, of, of wealth on the global scale. And um, um, so I would like to just say at this point that um, from this constellation that we just have been like uh, observing on one side to be very precise, using psy um, uh, psychological, sociological, so sociological studies, at the same time also linking uh, research into a concrete situation with global kind of relations and global concerns and global capitalism, I would like to propose a few points with regard to the work of Abi Bremer. First, the conjunction of the psychic condition of capitalism the psychic condition, uh, sorry, excuse me, is the conjunction between the psychic condition of labor with capitalism as one of the largest projects of European modernity. And the main question today in the era of neoliberalism or neoliberal capitalism, as uh, Mark has been elaborating on, is how can we make this visible? How can we make its mechanisms visible? What does labor look like in a time of neoliberal um, uh, capitalism? Uh, another connection also that I would like to uh, highlight is a, a connection that emerges through the work of Kabi Bremer between geography and economics. Kabi detects the possibility to locate labor relations, which only then allows to make visible its mechanisms, including its politics, when it comes to a localization and also a spatial kind of geographical uh, indication. And uh, another point I would like also to uh, make that I already mentioned uh, to some extent that um, his kind of uh, works allow a very precise study of the concrete situation but at the same time also point towards its relation and its kind of um, uh, production or um, connection to a global framework. Uh, this work is from the same period. It's uh, called Darstellung zwei Arbeiter im Ruhrgebiet, um, a representation to or depiction to workers in uh, the Ruhrgebiet, which is an area in West Germany highly industrialized, uh, particularly as a very important coal uh, industry. And it's um, you can see uh, this kind of visualization one on one side. It uh, kind of indicates um, the uh, percentage of workers within uh, the population of employing age, which is like the first graph that is indicated here. But uh, it is connected here with um, the kind of political attitude, uh, certain kind of a political a tendency on ideology of the workers in these particular uh, places. And what you see here in these kind of uh, round statistics indicate various cities uh, in uh, West Germany. And the third chart indicates uh, the distribution of wealth, where also, as above here, each color kind of suggests um, a certain kind of um, uh, um, class uh, and uh, a, 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 like a group of. Uh, oh, Income, probably the group of income. Uh, as you see here, like below is the, like the, the yellow indicates uh, the middle class or small income sector, the gold, uh, of course, the high finance, and the blue, the worker. I'm showing this in order to indicate um, the way uh, what kind of artistic uh, means and languages, uh, methods, Kabe Bremer kind of invented in order to make um, the kind of the constitution of society according to economics and politics palpable and visible. And this is exactly one feature also of um, realistic practice to make the constructedness and uh, the mechanisms uh, visible in its uh, kind of also relation between economics and politics, between also as an issue of class and economics. 
Another work is um, Lost uh, Working Days, Lost Work Days Due to Strikes and Suspensions. And um, I would like just to um, mention here the way how abstraction uh, is um, kind of um, an aspect that, of course, is um, apparently really important in the work by Capri. Um, we are, I mean, what this kind of uh, diagram indicates are uh, uh, Italy, Denmark, United States, here on the third, I just, I need to get, provide a certain sense, United Kingdom, Belgium, France, uh, kind of a translation of statistics and data management of lost workplace uh, due to strikes and suspensions between 1973 and 75. And Sven Lüttigen in his essay, a recent essay, Inter Abstraction, would claim that in the regime of concrete abstraction, the failure of form needs to be repeated over and over again. A form needs to fail again and fail better without turning into replacement objects. And I think this is something here really crucial in terms of uh, the kind of sabotage and the refusal of representation that uh, Capi, and this is where I think his strength and his importance uh, is situated, to uh, not neglect formalism, but formalism as an instrument in order to delineate and to make visible um, the economic uh, conditions relations in relation to labor in this particular case, by using abstraction as an artistic instrument to reveal its realism. And I think this is also here important to keep in mind that Dr. Brecht also would have said, that formalism is not realism. The form is not about to take up a representational uh, function, but to indicate form is uh, something that um, is used uh, for educational purposes or as instruments in order to intervene in formal languages of the present of reality. Um, this um, is a work um, I forgot to mention in the beginning that um, Capé is an artist who has been concerned in many works also with the issue of race and uh, he has been um, uh, working uh, like the distribution of wealth in relation also to uh, kind of racial uh, violence and racial injustice in relation to global uh, economics and global capitalism. This is a work that uh, he developed in 75, families with income below the respective poverty line and percentage. And the poverty line is regulated each year in new with regard to um, white Americans and African Americans in um, the year between 1967 and 75. And this is a kind, um, I mean, on the bottom you see the timeline and uh, the diagrammatic uh, coordinate, the um, um, vertical indicates um, the change of the poverty line per year. And um, this uh, is, um, I mean, again, uh, this kind of um, translation of a statistics into a diagrammatic work, but at the same time working kind of on the margins or very actively with the means of um, uh, artistic practice and here painting, uh, it's like proposing a diagram and uh, delineating the kind of income relations according to race in the, in the United States in the 70s. Um, Capi said uh, in an interview uh, at the Studio International 76, I don't think much of subjective form discovery. A form can't exist in the inside world. Forms always have something to do with the outside world. This was suppressed by the abstract expressionists. I attempt now, a bit with sledgehammer, to make that completely clear. Every form comes absolutely from reality. We can't discover anything, and why shouldn't I then take this form over as it is? This is, if you wish, a somewhat watered-down materialistic conception of art, for which reason I am oft suspected of being a communist, which isn't in all aspects correct. The name KP is um, taken from his initials Karl Peter and he changed his name Karl Peter to or took only the initials in 1964 in sympathy with the banish, uh, the prohibition of the Communist Party in uh, Germany in the mid-50s. But he was never a member of the Communist Party 
And it's also another feature, a kind of particularity of a war generation that has experienced a whole society as a kid committing itself to party politics and to a genocidal uh, racial uh, colonial project as the Nazi regime uh, I mean, was implementing uh, over more than a decade. Um, the kind of refusal and the distance and skepticism towards any party political programs and commitment. But nevertheless expressing here also a political position by um, indicating here again a politics in relation to geography. Uh, which, 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 this is a work, Color Geography number no. 7, localizing of, uh, red, um, of shades of red. Red are the communist countries, cross-hatched are areas that are ruled by communists. I'm just leaving this as a kind of um, uh, explanation for the moment. I think I'm a bit... Um, please tell me when I have to uh, kind of uh, shorten it. I have a lot of material. I must admit. Uh, a very crucial exhibition, and this also was formative for a lot of thoughts now for the exhibition at Wavero, which I would like just to mention. It's not a retrospective exhibition at Wavero. It's more kind of an attempt to depart from the practice by Patrick Bremer and to analyze his conditions of production and his practice uh, in relation to the social function of art and society to translate this into a contemporary setting. This exhibition was in 74, Art and Society, Society into Art, the German month at the ICA in London. Um, it was an influential exhibition um, that, uh, as Norman Rosenthal, who was one of the writers said, introduced a political kind of framework um, and the political kind of uh, position taken with regard to artistic practice that was highly appreciated and well visited and was a platform for a lot of people to meet. Richard Hamilton came over uh, many times. And um, it was colloquium based. And this is another um, important aspect for an artistic practice to inquire and investigate constantly into its potential and potency to take up social responsibility, the social responsibility of the artist for society and the role of art. What can art do? What can art do in, uh, for living conditions in uh, capitalism, capitalist realism? And I think this question is more timely and more important than ever at the very moment. So art and society um, has been conceived entirely by this group of artists uh, that you see here with Klaus Steck, uh, Dieter Hacker, uh, Hans Hacker also was involved, but he didn't join the colloquium, uh, Josef Beuys and so on. And uh, in this uh, project, Papé uh, developed also through the discussions uh, the work uh, Real Capital Production. And um, it is um, kind of um, uh, an investigation into, um, I just flipped through um, these various forms of articulation that are all part of the project, Real Capital Production, where he asks, uh, the capitalist system of the West is controlled by 60 combines. Their economic and political influence has built up to such an extent that they are able to assert themselves even without the support of a U.S. landing force. So, and, uh, I'm not going to read the entire um, aspect. What I mean, what you see here in this kind of, or what is what is important and what is striking and really like crucial for the work by Kabi Bremer, and that's the reason why I think he is really more more contemporary than, uh, well, he is just uh, proposing possibilities to address. Uh, well, to suggest how the space of art and the artistic means can help us in order to make visible and palpable uh, the relations uh, and dependencies between politics um, and economics and, um, and uh, also uh, geographies. And um, again, this is another kind of um, uh, relates kind of to that what he has said with regard to abstract expressionism that their form had been neglected. Here he uses form in order to indicate in a very kind of speculating way the interdependencies between production and real capital. And um, where, um, I mean, he is using a very concrete combine, ITT, which has its space in New York, to indicate um, the kind of, uh, the mechanisms um, that take up the technical productions conditions caused by the accumulation of capital. And uh, it's a way of intervening into 
um, uh, the conditions of um, uh, the production of reality. This is another kind of installation shot from the studio, Regensburger Straße 37 in Berlin, and um, there you can see, I mean, as an example also how he has been working with his works in relation to exposing it and to also juxtapose the interlinkages between uh, the various projects. In 71, 1971, there was an exhibition uh, at the Hamburg uh, Kunstverein, and this was highly much um, uh, like uh, based on uh, visitors' elaborations. Here you see a work that also was at this exhibition 71 in Hamburg, Korrekt für den Nationalpark, and this was taken in the apartment of Benny Block. I inserted this, I'm showing this image to you in order to see the importance of the social space also as an exhibition space, and as a kind of a space of um, a meeting and developing the projects. Uh, the Hamburg exhibition um, is uh, like called Farbtest Nationalfarben. The German national colors black, red, gold are presented separately as small flags for the public to choose. The colors chosen um, place, uh, time, and target organs are statistically recorded. First is the political symbolic value of the color spontaneously recognized. Second, is it a generally recognized attribution of the colors to specific political tendencies? And does the test, third, subject stand by his choice? While flag, roll it up, hide it, or throw it away? To what extent is this procedure suitable to illustrate political tendencies? And um, this is another project where, um, I mean, he's working with this collective symbol or kind of a symbol that is kind of framing a um, national uh, concept, concept here of the, uh, like the nation state of Germany. And uh, he links this uh, by investigating what color should be attributed from the visitor's perspective to an economic um, class. And he would argue that the flag, uh, according to the permanent changes in the economic relations among the population and the distribution of wealth in society, would need to change constantly. And um, uh, it's what's fascinating also about Capri is that he has been also always with a long-term project in research. This is his participation at, doc at Documenta 5, 1972, um, in Kassel. And um, do we have the time? I would like to show this, uh, The Ideale Landscape. It's a film that he has conceived in the framework uh, of a project called Ideale, Lands Ideale Landschaft, Ideal Landscape. It's a, um, what he called the product series, investigating into the denaturalization de of nature and the landscape as a constructed entity. And one has to keep in mind this work from the end of the 60s, um, where also the time of the Second World War and the ideology in terms also of visual grammar of the Nazi regime still resonated and kept busy uh, the artists of the generation uh, highly. That uh, the Heimat film was a highly kind of important uh, propagandistic and um, uh, ideological instrument to place, uh, to make a clear distinction between uh, nature and culture, to subjugate the subject to culture, to nature. Excuse me. And uh, this film, Ica the Landscape, um, uh, he would kind of say about that work is, I'm only interested in the colors and what the beholder does with them. There are various colors on offer, leaf green, middle green, spring green, sky blue, and I'm interested in which landscape the beholder composes from them, whether he uses these colors at all and makes his own in the landscape from them. Could you say more about how that actively occurred in terms of some of those works you showed and also the relationship to, to René Bloch and how René Bloch proposed um, 
a new means of distribution of art in the form of multiples and additions and so on? Definitely, it's like the, um, uh, the kind of the history or like the experience of the fluxus moment of the 50s is absolutely important when it comes to the activities when a block has been doing this gallery and it also shimmered through and the early project Papi has done with uh, publication played a crucial role also on this practice. So um, using uh, as a kind of also of a vernacular format the postage stamp to another example as a space to address but also to make use of the mass um, channel, um, uh, mass produce but also mass distribute information channels and uh, working in high editions of uh, prints for example. This is uh, uh, one of the prints he has been doing um, as one of many, and each print is an original, and each print exists in a high edition to kind of suspend the gulf, as he called it, between uh, the trivial art and high art. And I mean, he was uh, sabotaging the uh, kind of the institution, but also the kind of capitalistic um, uh, framework of artistic produ production was at, at the core of his practice. And it also might quite be interesting to see, uh, to kind of keep in mind that uh, with regard to the institution, uh, he would not destroy, he would not refuse to work with the institution, rather to find ways, what he called, to formulate Sichtagitation, to agitate, to mobilize the, the, um, uh, the ways of seeing. And uh, so, I mean, uh, the various kind of formats he has been kind of trying to intervene by the choose of the format, by using printing, making techniques, by addressing the TV uh, image production as a mass culture, but also by using the institution as a social space. So I think it's uh, multi-layered. Okay, well maybe it's time to have a break and then we'll come back with Howie and Evan after the break, so half an hour. Could you say more about how that actively occurred in terms of some of those works you showed and also the relationship to, to René Bloch and how René Bloch proposed um, a new means of distribution of art in the form of multiples and additions and so on? Definitely, it's like the, um, uh, the kind of the history or like the experience of the fluxus moment of the 50s is absolutely important when it comes to the activities when a block has been doing this gallery and it also shimmered through and the early project Papi has done with uh, publication played a crucial role also on this practice. So um, using uh, as a kind of also of a vernacular format the postage stamp would be another example as a space to address but also to make use of the mass um, channel um, uh, mass produce but also mass distribute information channels and uh, working in high editions of uh, prints for example. This is uh, uh, one of the prints he has been doing um, as one of many and each print is an original and each print exists in a high edition to kind of suspend the gulf as he called it between uh, the trivial art and high art and I mean he was uh, sabotaging the uh, kind of the institution, but also the kind of capitalistic um, uh, framework of artistic produ production was at, at the core of this practice. And it also might quite be interesting to see, uh, to kind of keep in mind that uh, with regard to the institution, uh, he would not destroy, he would not refuse to work with the institution, rather to find ways, what he called, to formulate Sichtagitation, to agitate, to mobilize, the, the um, 
uh, the ways of seeing. And uh, so, I mean, uh, the various kind of formats he has been kind of trying to intervene by the tools of the format, by using printing, making techniques, by addressing the TV uh, image production as a mass culture, but also by using the institution as a social space. So I think it's uh, multi-layered. 